Approximately 3 million people have so far lost their jobs under lockdown, with women accounting for two-thirds of them. Casual workers are among those mostly affected. Let's discuss the additional challenges women casual workers are facing. I'm joined by Puselezo Libiane from a Casual Workers Advice Office. Puselezo, thank you so much for your time. Now, firstly, before we begin, let's define yes, casual yes. workers and who exactly falls under this category in South Africa context of employment and, and labor. Uh, can you repeat that again? I didn't catch uh, the whole uh, question. So I was saying, before we get into our interview today, can you define who exactly falls into that category of casual workers in South Africa? Um, it's mostly working class women. Women are from previously disadvantaged backgrounds. Um, it's, uh, I can say... Uh, indigenous women because I don't like using the term uh, black women because even um, the so-called colored women and Indian women are also affected by this. All right. Now, in the case of um, the UFI's COVID-19 Temporary Employer Employee Relief Scheme, um, you um, casual workers were excluded initially. And in May, you and several other groups, you, you brought this in front of the attention of the Labor Court. Tell us about that process, including who was involved and what the current situation is like now. Okay. Um... The Casual Workers Advice Office, we work uh, with um, workers from uh, labor brokers and casual workers, uh, temporary workers, or people who don't work uh, normal hours like every day. So we saw the need uh, that um, since these people can't fight for themselves, that we take the initiative to do the talking for them. So... Um, Casual Workers Advice Office uh, uh, contacted uh, some of the organizations that uh, we, we, we uh, partnered with, uh, we built alliances with, and uh, came up with the initiative that um, since well, uh, we know that we're going to um, uh, the, the lockdown, some of the people might be uh, stand the chance of losing their jobs and what losing their and we, we thought we, we decided to um, uh, call the organizations and decide to, to come up with a strategy that will help assist uh, workers that uh, they have some sort of income or um, money to sustain them during this lockdown and, and um, hopefully after this because uh, we we could foresee that there would be uh, retrenchments and job losses. So we saw that we saw the need to take action and speak for the voiceless. Now, a government has made a couple of uh, U-turns when it applies to the UFI um, monies that were supposed to be distributed, especially for casual workers. Tell us what's the latest situation at the moment. Okay, uh, I can't say that um, this was... Uh, the government has uh, successfully um, responded because uh, we still have problems with uh, some companies refusing to apply for, for, for this money, for the test money for their employees. Some of them, you find that they do apply for the money, but it doesn't end up in the pocket of the workers. Um, the bosses try to take advantage of that, or they give them a less amount that, than that they than which they apply they qualified for. And after a certain time, when do they go back to work? They uh, the money gets deducted from uh, their salaries. So it has been it's still a struggle because some of the people say they haven't even been paid since um, maybe they got the, the May salaries, but since then it has been chaotic because some of the people complain. In fact, most of the people are complaining that it's either the money doesn't end up in their pockets or it ends up um, in the pockets of the bosses or they give them stories. So we get calls every day telling us different stories from uh, the working class people that, this money, they're still struggling to get it. 
All right, a final question from me. What, what now? What's the legal um, avenues that you will take? Are you going back to the Labour Court? Uh, we've had campaigns going to the Labour Courts. We had um, a demonstration last month at the Pretoria Labour Department. We handed over the memorandum. So right now we're waiting for the response from the, from the minister to answer our demands, to take action and do what is right and, um, and work for the people he saw that he will protect and work for. Because uh, it said that uh, we voted for this people now they think they're superior above us and they're not doing what they're supposed to do. It's been almost a month. We haven't heard anything from him. So if he doesn't take action, we will do something again. I don't know what we, we're going to plan to do, but whatever it is, he must be prepared because he doesn't want to listen to us when we do things peacefully. So he will force us to do things in an aggressive manner. Not that we promote violence, though.